Let's try this. Cut to go. Oh my gosh, that sounds horrid. One. Thank you. 
Okay, how'd you like that? That was a very slow version of Drunk and Disorderly. My song! Just in case anybody named Kip is thinking, I wrote that, dummy. You must have been in a... Uh, you know, whatever. All's cool in hell and hell. Believe me, you know this Motley Crue movie has actually made me more mad than anything else because, once again, Nicky is spewing his fantasy of what really happened. What they should have done is taken mixed version and a little bit of Vince, and then that's it. Because Tommy and Nikki don't know what they're talking about. Because they got right into heroin on the first tour. So everything is out the window until Dr. Field did. Believe me, I know. They were, we were rehearsing in the same place, the same rehearsal studio, Audible Recording. Look it up, Audible Rehearsal. It was in Burbank, California. If you go there now, it's on Empire and Maria, I think. Uh, the John Karabi version of Motley Crue has their handprints in the cement in the sidewalk. I'm surprised no one's tried to, but you know, it's only Motley Crue with John Karabi. But if you're interested in it, go. In Burbank on Empire and Maria, I think it is. It used to be called Audible uh, Rehearsal. And it would be my band, Motley Crue, Wasp, The Bangles. Just, it was nuts, but it was fun. And then it got crappy with uh, Bobby Brown got in there and started trashing stuff because he's a punk. But for a while, it was really cool. That was the place to rehearse. There was one room that was as big as a troubadour, or the whiskey. It had a balcony and everything. There was the other room that was pretty big, like as big as, a, say, the troubadour stage without the bar and you know you get as many people in there you fit about 250 in the one and then the small room was strictly for rehearsing and all that and I took that room once or twice but I really we really liked the big room because we could invite hundreds of people and just get blasted but rehearse and see how they liked it it was great audible rehearsal in Burbank I don't think it's there anymore but it was the place to rehearse back in the day. Okay. Alright, so the metal caster, just so you can see it, this thing is a beast. It's basically set up like a Les Paul. Uh, both pickups are mounted to the body, and uh, you know, 59 and a super distortion, Taylor. Uh, this was a working, <laughs> it, it don't work so good now. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We're getting close to 700. <laughs> then we got an 8, 9, 10, and done. And then I will do all sorts of crap. Because by then the album should be done. 
it's, it's already done. I just got to get the uh, the vocals and last two tracks cause are going to be sung by different people because it's going to be really poppy. These are two songs I wrote about a girl, let's just say. I don't want to embarrass her. She doesn't watch me. Anyway, so it's about my first wife. So, uh, and I wrote them way back in the 80s. So they're they're goofy and, you know. But I decided I should throw them on there at the end because they were my first real song that came from in here. And then uh, I didn't write one about my second wife, unless you want to call Eternal Darkness that. <laughs> and we don't have any other songs that I could... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's done, so it'll be out this year, and that will be that. I'm going to have my friend master it and everything, because he's doing a fine job. He knows what he's doing. He knows what I like, and I'm giving him as much time as he needs to do it. I'm just going to go up there, lay down the guitar stuff, five songs, leave, come back in a few months, lay the rest down, leave. He'll finish it up. We'll get the, we'll, he'll send it to the singer, bam, 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 boom, and done. 